Building is the official mover of design recipes on WPIX-TV. Hi everyone, I'm interior designer Kathy Hobbs and welcome to the premiere episode of Design Recipes. If real estate, interior design, and exotic travel is what you're looking for, you have come to the right place. Here's what we have on our kickoff episode of season three. Up first, Trump. When it comes to Manhattan real estate, to many the name Trump is synonymous with opulence and luxury. We take you inside Trump Soho. Then, these days, as numerous designers continue to utilize eco-friendly materials, our Brooklyn expert Donald Brennan introduces us to a designer who is truly cutting edge. We take on the staging of a two-bedroom residence right near Lincoln Center with the help of our official mover cues, just in time for the spring selling season. And last, but certainly not least, buying, selling, and financing tips from our mortgage expert, Ace Wadena Suparp at Citizens Bank. And it all starts right now. We begin this episode of Design Recipes in one of my favorite neighborhoods, Soho, at a building with a familiar name. Hi, I'm Natalie Baghdadi with Bracha, New York at Keller Williams NYC. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Kathy. Welcome to Trump Soho. Great. Natalie, I've never been to a Trump residence before, so this is quite a treat. Now, I'm in a hotel? Yes, this is a condominium, but it functions as a hotel. Now, what does that mean exactly? Every unit is available to be purchased, so this unit is for sale, and basically Trump manages the property, and they rent out your unit daily, nightly, so that you can get a great income. So you're buying it as is. It's a very turnkey investment. It features Casa Furniture from Fendi, which is really lovely, nice. as well as the great finishes. Educate me a little bit about this type of investment opportunity. It's a condo, but it doesn't operate the same way as a condo, right? Tell right. me a little bit about the nuances. So basically, you own the unit and you have the opportunity to stay in the unit if you'd like. For how they, long? They give you up to 120 days a year. So if you don't want to stay in the unit, you'll just generate more income because they're going to rent it out nightly. But if you do want to stay in the unit, you have that opportunity as well and that flexibility. So it really is your unit. It's just more of an investment opportunity than anything else. So Kathy, this is the master bedroom. You have beautiful floor to ceiling corner windows with lovely views and we're right off of the master bathroom. Now what I'm looking at, all of these beautiful finishes, the tufted headboard, this yeah. is all designed by Fendi. Exactly. And comes with every single Everything resident. you see. Nice, I like that. Yeah. Now this is a master bath that yes. I'm seeing? So you have the master bathroom here. Oh wow, this is spectacular. Isn't it enormous? You have this huge, beautiful marble bathroom with double sinks. You have the lit vanity for the mirrors. You have a television, all your towels, your robes. You have this gorgeous stall shower with a rain shower head and an amazing soaking tub with a gorgeous view of the east side with a great, great, great light. And all this comes turnkey, the towels, the Everything. robe, all that. Definitely. Now when I mentioned that I'd never been inside a Trump residence, I'm always thinking about luxury and opulence. This is modern, luxurious, elegant, all at the same time. It is, it's so lovely. And Kathy, and before we leave, I will show you these beautiful custom closets nice. in the master bedroom with an electronic safe. And this actually wraps around into the living room. Okay. And I'll show you a really nice feature here where you can have a separation of the space to give you additional privacy. Absolutely love the mirror. Great design feature. I actually want to talk about this room a little bit. Tell me what you have here. Okay, here. So you have this espresso maker as well as a fully stocked bar. You also have some refrigeration below, under storage, a sink, as well as an area to put some cups and glasses. You also have a little hidden microwave here as well. I love that. <laughs> and that's something that you normally don't see in a hotel room. Definitely. It's definitely fully loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing me outside. Soho has always been one of my favorite neighborhoods and it's still hot. And it always will be. You know, Soho has its famous boutiques, its great dining. And the nice thing about this unit is we're literally steps away from mainstream Soho, West Broadway. We're right off of Spring Street. So basically you're a little bit on the outskirt, but the nice thing about it from an investment standpoint is so much is going on in the neighborhood right now and they're just expanding Soho and building more and more. You're definitely gonna appreciate on your investment.
Thank you for getting me outside. Such a gorgeous day to tour Soho and this beautiful residence. How would you sum it up? Well, we're basically here in this one bedroom. We have one and a half bathrooms and an excellent feature that I forgot to mention, which is super convenient, is an owner has their own closet, which they can leave all their belongings in, lock it up, so they really don't have to bring their things every time they want to come and sit. And that's located where? And that's in the half bathroom. The amenities of this building consist of an 11,000 square foot bi-level spa where owners of the condos get an additional discount. You also have the spot cocktail lounge, Trump Soho's own library, we have a seasonal pool, an outdoor deck that you can go take a dip in and have a drink at our lovely Bardot. You also have meeting and event spaces with a banquet hall if you want to throw a private event or party. You additionally have Koi Restaurant, which is a well-renowned high-end restaurant in our lower level lobby. So this is essentially great investment opportunity in the center of it all, and you're going to get income and have a place to stay. Exactly. It's really such a wonderful opportunity for an investor. Up next, Donald Brennan of Brennan Real Estate takes us inside the design studio of eco-friendly Brooklyn-based designer Daniel Trophy. Coming up. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm Kathy Hobbs. Beautiful, one of a kind, and made of mushrooms? Right now, you're inside the studio of a designer who is using materials that will truly surprise you. And she's sharing with our Brooklyn expert, Donald Brennan. Donald, we can't wait to learn more. Thanks, Kathy. Industry City has quickly become a haven for artists and artisans seeking affordable studios and lofts in a creative environment. One such business is Danielle Trophy Design, a company focused on sustainability and eco-friendly design. But to truly understand what the studio is all about, you have to see it for yourself. Let's go check out Danielle Trophy Design. Danielle Trophy Design is part furniture design, part industrial design, and all cutting edge. Danielle, how would you describe Danielle Trophy Design? I try to incorporate either a material science or an innovative technology mm -hmm. to create sustainable solutions. So this is the Mushloom lighting collection. So this is our, our standard table lamp. Uh, the material is actually using mushroom mycelium. Mushroom mycelium is the root structure of mushroom. So mm -hmm. the mushroom that we know is the flowering body. Mycelium is this tight network of, of binding uh, hyphae that actually holds together the forest floor. So you can imagine it using it in this application. Uh, it's binding together this loose agricultural rice to form this solid lightweight piece. So it looks like we have some components uh, assembled here. Can you walk me through the process? Sure. So first we start out with Ecovative Design's material. So Ecovative Design is in upstate New York. Uh, they've really developed this material. And what it consists of is a byproduct from the agriculture industry. So it's chopped up corn stalks, seed husks, a little bit of hemp, and it's already been inoculated with liquid mushroom mycelium. Wow. So it comes in this, you know, a dry form. It's almost like a mulch if you can, mm -hmm. you know, if you can visualize. And yep. so we're going to begin with this material. Yep. Seems very light. Very lightweight. So, you know, that's, a, that's another great part of, um, of this process and this product is you're starting with a waste product. Okay, that's great. Uh, next, we're going to add the water if you want to help me with that. Okay, how much? So we'll just start with a little bit at a time and we'll Across just... the top? Yeah, sure. Perfect. Okay. And I'll start to mix it. You want to keep pouring a little more okay. and a little more. What eventually will happen, we'll, we will leave the material and we let it grow out for a couple of days. And right. what that means is the mushroom mycelium is going to begin to grow. So right. we've rehydrated it. It's ready to start eating and digesting mm -hmm. the agriculture waste. Wow. So as it grows, it's going to eat it as well as bind together with it. Right. So you can imagine in a couple of days, you'd start seeing a little bit of this white material and it'd be mm -hmm. ready to mold. So right here is a two-part mold. Easy, it's got a nice little plug for it. It's mm -hmm. easy to demold as well as mold. Right. So you work with the material. Like I said before, a little bit of that craft production, you're, you know, you're getting your hands dirty with right. this, and it's, so what will happen, once this mold is filled, 
Um, you will leave the material, it'll be put into a grow chamber, mm -hmm. and over the course of the next four to seven days, depending on the size of the part, right. the mycelium will grow and bind together all the agricultural waste. This part has grown for about four to six days, and wow. voila! So you can, you can see, you know, from the beginning to the end, um, what has happened here. So all the white that you've seen, that's the mycelium that has grown and bound this together. So the final stage for this mushroom mycelium lampshade will be to dry it and to bake it. Mm -hmm. So once it's baked, it renders the material inert, so it will no longer be growing. Danielle's biodegradable lamps made of mushrooms have won the praise of the design community and put her on the radar of the tech community. Considered a pioneer, Danielle Trophy Design is the result of an innovative idea that this designer literally planted and watched grow. So what did it take to make this concept work for a business? It's a great question, um, and it's always evolving as well. Uh, this is a very new field. It's mm -hmm. considered biodesign. Right. And uh, you know, in the past year, the lighting collection is available on my website through mm -hmm. the online shop. Right. And we're now um, getting involved with local retailers across the nation and internationally to sell this product line. So it's really been a development of you know, creating an entirely new product yep. um, from an entirely new material for this industry and, um, and really going through that evolution process to bring it to your home. So we're standing in front of another signature piece of yours. Can you uh, talk to us about that? Sure. This is the Vertical Hydroponic Garden. Um, and it's really an initiative to get people interacting with their plants mm -hmm. and to also bring you know, to the user hydroponic technology. Yep. So vertical hydroponics is a soilless method of growing plants. Wow. So instead of soil, um, you're using a different kind of medium. In mm -hmm. this case, I use expanded clay pellets. Right. And the system feeds uh, nutrients and water directly to the roots and circulates throughout the entire system. So let me show you the technology mm -hmm. that's designed into the system. So it's designed to be concealed. So this is the hydroponics. The base is a water reservoir, pumps water to the top, and the design uses gravity to distribute the pods, or the water to all the planter pods. Wow. Well, this is certainly interesting. What do we have here? So this is one of our concept pieces. Uh, this is the sand-powered hourglass lamp. Wow. So this is a non-working prototype, but I'm gonna demonstrate what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So as you flip the lamp over, the sand will funnel down and it's turning a mechanism inside the lamp that's converting kinetic energy into electrical energy. Wow. So it's a completely off the grid uh, lighting fixture and you know we're working on that right now. It's, a, it's one of our exciting new projects. So what's next for Daniel Trophy Designs? That's a good question. I think this is a good uh, jumping off point is energy and how we can move uh, energy into our products. Mm -hmm. So as you can imagine, kinetic powered uh, lamp mm -hmm. lighting fixtures, also solar. So we're working next in solar and trying to, you know, let your let your objects power themselves, if you can imagine that. Interesting. So what made you decide to set up shop here in Industry City? Industry City is a, a large collection of very diverse group of you know artists, designers, manufacturers, uh, producers, makers. Um, you know, so it's really a diverse community, and it really does breed interaction between people um, mm -hmm. and collaboration. Yeah. My, I work with my wood turner that I can yeah. see out my window through right. the other building, yeah. nice. and you get to connect with other industries. Yeah, yeah. kind of like a campus of innovation, very collegial, uh, <laughs> relaxed environment though. Yes, and it's exciting because you know other people that are working in the same space are pushing the boundaries as well. You know, there is, there's an innovation spirit that, um, it's right here in Brooklyn. Nice. At a time when many businesses are focused on sustainability, Danielle Trophy has opened the door to a still yet untapped market. A marriage of innovation and environmentally friendly design that she helps continue to nurture and grow. I'm Donald Brennan of Brennan Real Estate. Back to you, Kathy. 
Coming up, it's spring, which can only mean one thing, spring selling season. When we come back, we stage a residence right near Lincoln Center. Welcome back to Design Recipes, everyone. I'm Kathy Hobbs. Today we're taking on a Design Recipes redesign in which we're going to be transforming this fabulous two-bedroom apartment for the cell. There's just one problem. It's entirely empty. I think our furniture just arrived. With our official mover cues moving now on location, it is time to kick this staging into high gear. This truck is full of all of our furniture and accessories. So as they say, now it's showtime. It's time to get this truck unloaded and get started. Okay, Flo. Yes. Flo's my main man, my chief foreman at Q's. Right, right. What do we got today? Well, we got a, a side piece right here. All right, and this is basically our bed that we're gonna put in one of our main bedrooms, okay? Yes. So that's the queen bed. Okay. Uh, you loaded me up with a lot of beautiful artwork. Yes. So we're gonna start putting that in different rooms so we know what goes where. Um, this whole truck is full? Yes. All right, we got a two bedroom today. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, you know, when you do this, what's basically the first thing that you always wanna do? Well, the first thing we do is we bring in the rugs first. And then next, we'll bring in the big items. And then after that, uh, we'll bring in the small items uh, so you can place it easier to where it gotta go. And that's the way I always do it, too. I always bring my rugs first in order to really kind of lay out the space. Then those big pieces, the sofa before the coffee table, yes. the bed before the nightstand, sounds like a plan. Yes. Let's go. We're on the same page. <laughs> always. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put the accessories over there. You guys, we're under deadline pressure. They want this apartment staged yesterday, and as you can see, it's completely empty. So, we are drowning in boxes. I want you guys to start unpacking. I'll talk to the crew, so let's get started. All right, let's go. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> Bedrooms are where you're going to really want to make a bold statement in order to appeal to potential buyers. In this particular bedroom, we're starting out with a neutral color palette, mostly white, in order to appeal to a wide audience. And then we're going to layer the space with lots of color. With our furniture now being assembled, this staging is really starting to come together. This is such an important room, the living room. So we really need to make it shine for potential buyers. We're about halfway through the staging process and our staging is really starting to come together. Okay, John, let's talk tips. What are three things that people should remember when selecting a mover? Okay. An educated consumer is the best consumer. You gotta do your research first of all. You gotta have certain areas where you have red flags. If they ask you for deposits up front, it's a red flag altogether. Tax is illegal for any type of mover to charge tax on a mover. Didn't know that. Yes, absolutely. And also, uh, Better Business Bureau is the best, best way to check on a company because they do checking on your DOT number, insurances, place of business, references. You can get it all from the Better Business Bureau. Great tips, John. What about a third tip? Should you just go with the lowest quote? I would definitely not recommend going with the lowest quote. Okay. And lowest quote does not necessarily mean that you're going to get the best service out there. All right, guys, really got to glam this up. I'm so into metallic these days, so I want to use a lot of gold, a lot of silver. We have this gold box. We also have this little figurine and even this agate. So I'm thinking that we're going to use a lot of metallics today. Sounds good. 
Now that my team and I have selected our main accessories and accents, it's time for final touches. Now that our staging is complete, it's time to share the big reveal with the real estate agent. All right. All okay, right. Jerry, here you are in your stage living room. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You like it? Yes. Really? Yes. I love it, Kathy. I mean, it's amazing. Great uh, use of space. I had no idea what you were going to do, but... Um, you were scared. Come on, Jerry. I really was. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's hard work with like, like a loft-like space. Yeah, yeah. And, but you really, you know, created this living room, kind of a separate dining room, and it, it works perfectly. How does staging help you as a real estate agent? Well, it helps me sell the apartment, <laughs> basically. Why? Because uh, it, it, it presents the space in the best possible light. And you know, the way you've done it with you know, separating, creating uh, different areas, dining and living room, people are like, like that guidance. I'm just very happy. I mean, I walk in here and, I, and I, the, the furniture, the colors, and everything works with the, the backdrop of this great view. Thank you so much, oh, Kathy, for all of your help. I really welcome. appreciate it. It was my pleasure. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. I know we'll sell it in record time. I, I, I cannot wait to start. Well, keep me posted. I definitely will. I am absolutely thrilled with how our staging turned out. It feels bright and modern and stage for the cell. In order to make this staging a success, I incorporated five key design recipes tips. First, furniture placement. Here in the living room, I decided to select an oversized chaise and two chairs as opposed to a sectional sofa. The room still feels open and we have ample seating. Next, I worked with a neutral color palette. Colors such as white and taupe, along with deep, rich colors like brown and black. These are great foundation colors from which you can build a color story. For tip number three, we head to the ground. Choose a large area rug in order to anchor your space. I choose my area rugs first for color or graphic inspiration or last to tie everything together. Tip number four, use plenty of books. Books can add a lot of color and a graphic element to your space and is an inexpensive design trick. And finally, tip number five, use greenery and florals throughout your space. There's nothing quite as bland as a space with no greenery or florals. And you don't have to use all of the same kind. For example, here we have used this topiary type of arrangement and over here, a more traditional floral. Well, our job is done. Our moving truck is empty. Our apartment is staged. It's time to head on to the next job. In a city like New York, it's hard enough to get around, let alone navigate the ins and outs of the real estate market, especially when it comes to buying, selling, and financing, which is why we've partnered with Citizens Bank and Ace Wantana Suparp, Executive Vice President of Residential Lending. Hi, my name is Ace Wantana Suparp, Vice President and Regional Manager with the Home Mortgage Division for Citizens Bank. Hey, I'm Anthony from Long Island City. I'm trying to buy a house. How do I determine how much of a loan I'm qualified for? That's a great question. There are many tools and calculators available online to help give you a general idea of what you may be able to qualify for. And most will ask you to enter your current income and monthly debt. That's because lenders will look at these two pieces of information to determine your debt to income ratio. This is just a technical term 
for saying that they'll compare your monthly gross income to your total monthly debt, including your anticipated new monthly mortgage payment. Every loan program has its own set of requirements, but a maximum debt to income ratio of 43% is a good general rule of thumb to follow. Of course, the best way to find out for certain what you might qualify for is to consult a mortgage loan officer. And if you haven't already, create a monthly budget to determine how much of a mortgage payment you can afford. Great mortgage tips from our experts at Citizens Bank. Well, that does it for this episode of Design Recipes. I'm interior designer Kathy Hobbs. Remember to follow us on social media because this season we're going to be doing more posts than ever on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And we're also going to be coming to you live with video using Facebook Live, Periscope, and YouTube. Remember to watch us on the Pix11 Morning News and anytime at pix11.com backslash design recipes. See you next time.